We're here at the National Firearms Museum here at NRA headquarters. I'm with Jim Sapika, director of the NRA Museums. And Jim Sapika, every time I think you can't outdo yourself, then you come to, to with this. What is this array of crazy looking things we have for curators' corners? It it's, gets weird now, John. We're going way off the sidewalk. <laughs> it's going to get weird. I it's going to get way weird. <laughs> what we've got are trap guns. Now you hear trap guns, you think. Yeah, trap and ski. Yeah, yeah. no. These are, these are the weird trap guns. <laughs> uh, uh, now these were made for uh, either thinning out varmints wow. or for harvesting furs. Wow. Uh, and uh, the, the concept goes way back. There, there are trap guns and alarm guns that go back to the flintlock and wheel lock era. But we're going to pick these up in the uh, in the 1850s. And uh, uh, these are some of the more popular commercial trap guns from about the 1850s up into the 1920s. And by the 1930s, people had sort of figured out that setting a gun that just fires indiscriminately when something trips the trigger is probably a bad idea. So, so what the could uh, possibly go yeah, wrong, what, Jim. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like such a good idea at the time. But these are uh, are relics of that bygone era. Uh, awesome. One of the very popular ones was the Ruth R E U T H E trap gun, and this is set up. Now, this it looks horrendous because it's got <laughs> these giant barbs on the front. But what those actually are is what you hang the bait on. So that when the uh, when the varmint comes up and tugs on the bait, that pulls the trigger oh, wow. and gives them both barrels right in the face. <laughs> wow! Now, I'm a the little un yeah yeah I'm a little <laughs> unsure as why they designed this with a detachable hammer, cool. presumably so that it could be also used as a pocket pistol. Seems like a terrible idea to yeah. me, but presumably you could trigger both barrels from yeah, from stick, behind. Stick that in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now a couple of, <laughs> Yeah. A couple of years later, North and Couch came out with a similar idea. This is a percussion pepper box. Mm -hmm. This the hammer is this circular device that pulls all the way back to cock. Wow. And then when it's tripped, that one percussion cap ignites all six rounds Ooh. at once. Ouch. That's Ouch gonna, indeed. That's gonna Ouch indeed. Now it's set up to where you tie the bait onto that that uh, hole right there, and when they pull it again, they get all six rounds. But this one was actually designed to where it really could be used as a pocket pit mm -hmm. pistol because it has a trigger release back here as well right. that can release the trigger. Oh, okay. Striker comes forward, ignites the cap, fires all six barrels. And that's for different kind of varmints if you're carrying it as a pocket pistol. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But they say this was popular in Australia as a kangaroo gun. Well, <laughs> poor kangaroo. It gets worse and worse, doesn't it? it, it yeah, it, it just gets, it gets worse. It'll get worse as we go on. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what you use for kangaroo bait, but presumably there is somebody in Australia knows what you would. Uh, that's right. What would use for kangaroo? Now, what bait. is that thing? I guess this, that's for the bait. Yeah, yeah. I'm figuring it out now, Jim. Okay, I'm starting to get yeah, it now. Yeah. yeah, we've gone from the percussion era to something that fires a 22 mm -hmm. cartridge. And it's a uh, it's a Taylor fur getter, and this was fairly popular. Uh, but again, that's your bait, and attached to the trigger, uh, you've got a spike that attaches mm -hmm. here. Put it there. Put it on a tree. Uh, bait it with whatever you think your 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 varmint is going to want, and it just sits there and waits. Wow. Same era is this never fail gopher gun. The never fail gopher gun. Yeah, yeah, and we talked to. The, the, Getting a little more civilized, maybe, with the trap guns here. This <laughs> fires a blank. This fires a 38 S and W blank. The blank and the, the charge of the blank makes a 90 degree turn. But what you do is you set this. You load it with a 38 S and W blank. Uh, load it in there. Close it up. You set the uh, set the trigger. Go for uh, uh, that's in the entrance to their burrow, and they don't like that. Goes for comes up. Uh, tries to push that out of their way. He's coming from this direction. Right there, fire, fires the blank charge right into the belly of the gopher, and uh, uh, there you go. You've got your, your, got your never fail gopher getter. 
when you and I were kids, we sang a song, great big gobs of greasy, she grimy, grimy gopher, gopher guts. guts. I'm sure that's where this or originated. <laughs> I'm sure it was a uh, wow. advertising jingle for the never fail so gopher guts. I'm assuming since it's never fail that that's enough to, without an actual cartridge, I mean, with it's just a blanket, it's enough to get it done. I wondered about that, and so we tried this with a banana. <laughs> Which is a pretty good stand-in for a gopher. Yeah. And yeah, it would be very effective yeah. on, a, on, a, on a gopher, ground wow. squirrel, whatever. But uh, there you go. Those are our trap guns. Wow. What an oddball collection of really cool guns. It's just always great, Jim, to see the, the technology and the clever ideas that people use here. So uh, through the ages with, with firearms, there's so much great innovation. Well, thank you so much for a very interesting and odd and weird segment of Curator's Corner. Always a pleasure. Thank you.